Hello, welcome once again to Leto's Law. I'm Steve Leto. I uh, got a great story sent to me by several people, widely publicized uh, in the New York Times, MSN.com, and a few other places have had this story. But uh, Kashmir Hill and Heather Murphy wrote it. Your DNA profile is private. A Florida judge just said otherwise. For police officers around the country, the genetic profiles that 20 million people have uploaded to consumer DNA websites represent a tantalizing resource that could be used to solve cases both new and cold. But for years, the vast majority of the data have been off-limits to investigators. The two largest sites, Ancestry.com and 23andMe, have long pledged to keep the user's genetic information private. And the smaller one, GED Match, severely restricted police access to its records earlier this year. Last week, however, a Florida detective announced at a police convention that he had obtained a warrant to penetrate GED Match and search its full database of nearly 1 million users. Legal experts said that this appeared to be the first time a judge had approved such a warrant and that the development could have profound implications for genetic privacy. Uh, Aaron Murphy, a law professor at New York University, said that's a huge game changer. The company made a decision to keep law enforcement out, and that's been overridden by a court. It's a signal that no genetic information is safe. DNA policy experts said the development was likely to encourage other agencies to request similar search warrants from 23andMe, which has 10 million users, and Ancestry.com, which has 15 million users. And I'm not in any database yet, because I never bothered to do it. I know where I came from. If that comes to pass, the Florida judge's decision will affect not only the users of these sites, but huge portions of the population, including those who have never taken a DNA test. Uh Uh-oh. That's because this emerging forensic technique makes it possible to identify a DNA profile even through distant family relationships, which means now I've got to find out if my relatives have done this. Okay? Using public genealogy sites to crack cold cases had its breakthrough moment in April 2018 when the California police used GED match to identify a man they believe is the Golden State Killer. After his arrest, dozens of law enforcement agencies around the country rushed to apply the method to their own cases. Investigators have since used genetic genealogy to identify suspects and victims in more than 70 cases of murder, sexual assault, and burglary, ranging from five decades to just a few months old. Most users of genealogy resources and services have uploaded their genetic information in order to find relatives, learn about ancestries, uh, ancestors, and also get insights into their health, not anticipating the police might one day search for killers and rapists in their family trees. Uh, After a revolt by a group of prominent genealogists, GED Match changed its policies in May, requiring law enforcement agencies to identify themselves when searching its database, and it gave them access only to the profiles of users who had explicitly opted into such questions. And that's the thing, is apparently some of these websites will say, do you mind if we do this, or do you not want us to do this? And so the point is that people who said, no, don't do that, have still apparently been exposed because a judge said so. Uh, As of last week, according to GED Match co-founder Curtis Rogers, uh, just 185,000 of the site's 1.3 million users had opted in to that system. Like many others in law enforcement, Detective Michael Fields of the Orlando Police Department was disappointed by GED Match's policy shift. He had used the site last year to identify a suspect in a 2001 murder of a 25-year-old woman that he had spent six years trying to solve. Today, working with a forensic consulting firm, uh, Detective Fields is trying to solve the case of a serial rapist who assaulted a number of women decades ago. In July, he asked a judge in the 9th Judicial Circuit Court of Florida to approve a warrant that would let him override the privacy settings of GED Match's users and search the site's full database of 1.2 million users. After Judge Patricia Strobridge agreed... Detective Fields said in an interview the site complied within 24 hours. He said that some leads had emerged, but that he had yet to make an arrest. He declined to share the warrant or say how it was worded. Detective Fields described his methods at the International Association of Chiefs of Police in Chicago last week. uh, week. Logan Kepke, a policy analyst at Upturn, a nonprofit in Washington that studies how technology affects social issues, was in the audience. After the talk, multiple other detectives and officers approached him asking for a copy of the warrant, Mr. Kepke said. DNA policy experts said they would closely watch public response 
to news of the warrant to see if law enforcement agencies will be embodied, emboldened to go after the much larger genetic databases. And so here's the thing, is that the court granted the subpoena and the DNA company just rolled over and gave it to him. Why didn't they appeal it? You know, so uh, that worries me a little bit, but we'll see. Because it's going to take someone to appeal this, obviously, to get to the end. Now, if they did actually find somebody as a result of the subpoena, that person who's accused could argue this as, you know, an improper search and go that route. But the point is that they can violate the personal information of hundreds of thousands of people or millions of people. And who's in a position to appeal that? So it's unfortunate that the DNA company didn't file the appeal themselves. Um, <sighs> Professor Murphy said, I have no question in my mind that if the public isn't outraged by this, they will go to the mother load, which is the 15 million person ancestry database. Why play in the peanuts when you can go to the big show? <laughs> uh, Chief Science Officer at My Heritage, a genealogy database of around 2.5 million people, agreed and said they won't stop here. Because of the nature of DNA, every criminal is likely to have multiple relatives in every major genealogy database by now. Without an outcry, Professor Murphy and others have said, warrants like the one obtained by Detective Fields could become the new norm, turning all genetic databases into law enforcement databases. Not all consumer genetic sites are alike. GED Match and Family Tree DNA make it possible for anyone to upload his or her DNA information and start looking for relatives. Law enforcement agents began conduct conducting genetic genealogy investigations there, not because the sites were the biggest, but because they were open. Ancestry.com and 23andMe are closed systems. Rather than upload an existing genetic profile, users send saliva to the company's labs and then receive information about their ancestry and health. For years, fearful of turning off customers, the companies have been adamant that they would resist giving law enforcement access to their databases. Both sites publish transparency reports with information about subpoenas and search warrants that they receive. 23andMe says it has received seven data requests relating to 10 customers and has not released any data. Ancestry.com said in its 2018 report, that it had received 10 valid law enforcement requests that year and complied with seven, but that all the cases involved credit card misuse, fraud, and identity theft, not requests for genetic information. So that's the interesting thing. But like I said, remember that there is something in the Constitution someplace about unreasonable searches and seizures. And the question, of course, is, is this unreasonable? Because some people would think reasonable or unreasonable is how intrusive it is to you. And the police right now could be searching a database someplace, going through information, you wouldn't even know about it. How intrusive is that? Well, if you view it from that viewpoint as to what you know and how much it upsets you, if you don't know about it, <laughs> it's not very intrusive at all. But of course, getting your DNA uh, is actually very personal. In fact, that's something quite personal to you by definition. And so some people might say, yeah, that is intrusive. You know, that's an unreasonable search, right? So I guess the question is, how will the Supreme Court handle this if and when it gets before them? Uh, and in this day and age, I suspect it'll get before them sooner rather than later, but we'll see. So there you go. Your DNA profile, private? The Florida judge just said otherwise. Questions or comments? Put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye.